Apple has never had such a big difference between their regular iPhone and the Pro model, but this year they are radically different. The 14 didn't get many huge upgrades. Meanwhile, the Pro has been changed in almost every way. So we're gonna go test them side by side, see which one's right for you. Every year, I do a comprehensive review of the updates to the latest iPhone camera. This year, Apple's making me do it on hard mode. Usually, the Pro and the regular iPhone are so similar that I can just mention the differences and kind of interchange them as I test, but this year, look at the spec differences. The iPhone 14 Pro comes with some radically different features than the iPhone 14, so I thought before I do all the tests showing us how much we've evolved since older iPhones, let's figure out where are we this year with these two excellent cameras. You might be surprised, actually I know you're gonna be surprised, at the differences and the lack of differences. We spent all day and night running around taking test photos, so let's start by looking at some comparisons. I'll generally keep the 14 on the left and the 14 Pro on the right. If I just kind of look throughout the image, they are both very sharp. There's really nothing that stands out to me that's radically different here. The headline feature is that the Pro now has a 48 megapixel sensor that is generally downsampling to 12 megapixels. So if we just zoom in here, you can see overall, the detail is pretty similar between the two. Now, if I punch into 300%, I can see that the detail on her bag and her arm is more present. There is a little more detail visible on the 13 Pro. It's not substantial. Skyline shots are great for analyzing detail. And first thing I notice is that you can see that the Pro is now slightly wider. It's 24 millimeter lens shows a little more of the frame than the 26 millimeter of the iPhone 14. And then the moment of truth, if we zoom in, I mean, it's not a crazy difference. <laughs> If we look around the edges of frame, I mean, detail is about the same here. I mean, this is interesting. So the 14 got a larger sensor as well. They did both improve. It's not like there wasn't any changes to the 14, but you know, the results here in a well-lit, bright daytime image comes out pretty comparable. There's nothing jumping out at me that's radically different here. I noticed the iPhone 14 Pro has a little less noise being removed from the sky, so it's not quite as smoothed out. But first impressions, not a huge difference here. The iPhone 14 Pro also supports Apple's Pro Raw. So if we zoom in here, this is a true 48 megapixel file. And I do feel like this detail is real. I was kind of expecting it to look like, I don't, like mushy when it was at a full 48 megapixels, but it, it actually looks really solid. Let's quickly remind ourselves of some of the feature differences between the 14 and 14 Pro other than all those megapixels. The Pro features an always on display, so you can always see your background image, the time, and any widgets that you put on the home screen. And the display also has a higher peak brightness, which we can see when we're testing it outdoors. The regular phone has the same notch that we're used to at the top of the screen, where the Pro features the new hilariously named Dynamic Island, which has really beautiful animations and is a very nice design touch. And a few camera features that are exclusive to the Pro, it features a second gen optical stabilization, so the sensor is more stabilized than on the 14. It's got adaptive true tone flash, so they both update the color temperature, but on the Pro, it's gonna change the spread of the flash depending which lens you're using. Only the Pro features macro mode and file formats like ProRes for really high quality video, or if you wanna edit your images and push them really far, Apple Pro Raw. Looking at this more colorful example with Anya, you can see an interesting effect of the raw files, and that's that Lightroom is interpreting it very differently than the way that the iPhone does on its own. So now that it's raw, it's up to the interpretation of whatever software you use. So every software is gonna do it slightly differently. And at this sort of zoomed out thumbnail size, I actually prefer what the raw image looks like. It's a little bit softer. It has less of that like aggressive sharpening that we're used to from phone photos. And again, as I zoom in and move around, I mean, this detail feels much more substantial. I mean, this already surprises me a little bit. I was expecting to say that uh, you're always gonna see a bit of a difference, but raw won't emphasize it as much. That's not what happened. Raw really seems to bring out the additional detail that's hiding inside that 48 megapixel file. Also, just look at her pants for a second. This is how the iPhone interprets it, and it's very contrasty. It kind of looks like the oranges are starting to clip, but if we look at the raw file, it's much softer and, and I find more natural. This is more like what a mirrorless or DSLR photo would look like. These two are taken in portrait mode. It's used pretty subtly here. If we zoom into 100%, detail looks pretty similar. Looking at this in person, I can see a fraction more detail in her pants and her shirt. But if we zoom right in on her hat, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one of these came from which sensor. I think we're starting to see a pattern here. If we look at one more, zoom in to 100%, again, 
Not a huge difference between the two of these, especially if these were going to social media, I couldn't tell you which one was coming from the Pro. So if you're mostly shooting in well-lit environments with the main lens, looks like you're not gonna see a big difference with the iPhone 14. Now, I know there will be some differences, so let's dig a little bit deeper here. Okay, so super random, we were just outside shooting and people just invited us into this crazy event space. Something's happening in like an hour, but they've set up amazing lights that are perfect for testing out the iPhone 14. Cool. So thanks to KPMG for letting us shoot in their event. This was a pretty cool space to shoot in and we started testing one specific feature here that's new to iOS 16 and that's foreground blur. So here is the iPhone 14 Pro and here's the iPhone 14. And you can see the portrait mode is blurring out the background just like it always has, but now it's also blurring out her hand in the foreground. This really adds to the realism of this looking like true depth of field. So adding extra elements to your scene can really take it further now. And looking at these two side by side, the Pro responded a little bit differently. They were both interpreting the light in slightly different ways. And looking closely, they are both doing a great job. Apple spent a lot of time in the keynote talking about the photonic engine. And I'm still not really clear what that means, but it is having an effect here. What they've done is they moved deep fusion to process the image in this medium low light, like this example. So it's extracting all those details before the image is compressed. I'd still like to know more details about what's going on in this photonic engine, but it's clearly having a positive effect. Today, I was generally seeing more natural results from those deep fusion examples. And while we were in the space, I had to try out the new selfie lens. This is in portrait mode. Still doesn't do the best job of cropping out hair, but you know, it looks pretty good overall. And same thing, this is medium low light and you know, it looks like a very clean image. I'm really glad that they've been improving that selfie lens because it's one of the most used lenses on a camera for all content creators. I mean, think of TikTok, for example. And Anya helped with some more testing of the selfie camera. It is the same on the iPhone 14 and it's added autofocus. Before it was just focusing to infinity forever, but now it means that both people in your frame are gonna be sharp. And the 14 Pro, so you don't have to worry about that. They have both been updated. They're both bigger sensors, faster lenses, and it's making an improvement here. Everything does look sharper. Let's take a detour to talk about the video performance on these. Now, it's very similar between the two of them. I'm not gonna spend very long comparing the 14 and 14 Pro because they're doing most of the same things. I just wanna, first of all, appreciate how excellent the 4K quality still is. And I really appreciate that they've added 24 frames per second cinematic mode, which is something I was asking for in my review last year. So maybe I'll start to use cinematic mode a little more often. One trick that I think can help with that is in preferences, you can set it to remember what you set the f-stop to last time. So for example, I don't like it at 2.8 and I was tired of always changing it to something like F8 later. So I can just have it remember my previous setting. The award for most impressive video feature definitely goes to action mode. Now I saw a few other people testing this in their videos and it seemed like it wasn't making that big of a difference between the regular stabilization. And that's because stabilization is always on by default. So there is a way to turn it off and I did that. So these two cameras are strapped together. They're moving exactly the same way. And one of them has all of the stabilization turned off, which you can do with apps like Filmic Pro. The other one is running action mode. You're gonna see that it is cropping in a lot. It brings 4K video down to 2.8K, which I think is totally reasonable. It also defaults to using the ultra wide lens, which I don't prefer, it doesn't look as good. So maybe when you're in full sunlight and you need to be wide, but in my examples, I liked the way that the One X cropped in for action mode looked the most. It was really impressive. I think this is getting pretty close to what DJI and GoPro are doing. I posted this as a reel over on my Instagram, which you wanna go over there and follow me, it's at Stellman. And a few people commented that like, oh, well, Samsung has already done it. I was watching the tests, comparing this to Samsung's version, and I'm sorry, but it just blows away the 22 Ultra. Here's another photo kind of in medium light. We're in the shade, also exposing for outside. But I'm noticing a bit of a pattern in some of these that when I look at the fine textures, it does feel like the iPhone 14 is sharpening it a little bit further. And this probably isn't coming across in YouTube. And now that I just made everything more confusing, let's search for some more detail. So this image on the right comes from the iPhone 14 Pro and it is raw. So if we zoom in, this is a true 48 megapixel file. So what I'm looking at here is, for example, this texture in the cement. There's a lot more contrast to it on the iPhone 14, making it feel sharper. There's more detail, there's more going on. Um, but as I zoom out, the softness of the raw image is definitely preferable to me. This is more what film looked like, or, or this is what I, how I would process my larger sensor photos. So 
I don't know, that's kind of a testament to RAW, maybe more so than the megapixels. But again, as I zoom in, like, the detail holds up. I, I really expected these RAW photos to look less impressive than they do, but they're really nice. Here's a one-off, just, I thought this was a nice photo. It's using portrait mode on the telephoto on the iPhone 14. You can see that it is still blurring her hair a little bit there, but you know, it's still a great effect. Usually you just need to turn it down a bit so that it doesn't ruin too much hair. Another trick Apple's doing with megapixels is now there is a two times zoom. So it's actually cropping into the 12 megapixels in the middle of the sensor instead of scaling up those smaller pixels. Let's see the difference between the 14 and 14 Pro. Even when they're not zoomed in, I can already see it. There's a bit of noise and lack of detail happening here uh, under her hat. And if I zoom in, yeah, that's definitely a difference. There definitely is a lot more noise going on in that scaled up iPhone 14 image. I will say I've heard some people that are experts about tech describe this as that it's actually an optical zoom because it's using a real part of the sensor and really is using the lens. No photographer would call that any kind of zoom. It's, it's just cropping your image. It looks better. It definitely looks better than cropping the 12 megapixel sensor, but it's, it's still not zoom. And the three times lens still looks better. So looking at that three times zoom, the 77 millimeter lens that's only on the Pro, it's a lot cleaner. This is, this is a much sharper image. I still want that lens to get better because it's far from perfect and probably softer than any of the other lenses on the Pro, but I'd been using it a lot on my 13 Pro and I'm gonna keep using it on the 14 a lot more than that two times. What has had a big update is the ultra wide lens. This has never been updated if on the regular 14 and it's one of the biggest reasons I'd actually go with the Pro. I use that lens a lot and it's showing its age. So in this example, we're in bright sunlight. Overall, not seeing a crazy difference here. Let's take a photo that has a little less light. This was shot in the shade and even without zooming in, I can see a huge difference here. Just take a look at the concrete. It's like smooth like ice, whereas all the texture is preserved on the iPhone 14 Pro. I find this a little frustrating that they're not moving that ultra wide lens forward at all on the regular iPhone 14. It needs an update. A lot of people use and love this lens. Actually, if you're considering the 14 and what you're worried about is missing out on the telephoto lens, I think the ultra wide is much more useful. More people end up using it more of the time, but it needs an update. So I really wish it'd be moved forward, at least if it had the same update the iPhone 13 Pro had last year because these results, they're not great. And in a moment, we'll take a look at some very low light photos where you'll see more of a difference. But first, macro mode, another huge addition since the iPhone 13 Pro. Anya has been going crazy with it. So you can see this is the flower that she's taking a photo of, and this is how close she can get. And all year, honestly, she's been taking so many amazing macro photos. And if we compare it to the iPhone 14, well, there's no comparison. It just can't autofocus, so you can't get close to an object with that ultra wide lens. I did do a comparison to the iPhone 13 Pro, which you're seeing on the left, compared to the iPhone 14 Pro on the right. First of all, it's just cool to find what's hiding in flowers. But this example, which is a more boring photo, better shows the difference. If we zoom in to 300% here, you can just see there's way more detail going on in the texture of that petal. So that larger sensor and new lens on the ultra wide is making a big difference for macro photography as well. Actually, I like this example because the left is the 14, so it can't focus close enough. But both of them are interesting in their ways. I, I like these pics. And now the lights are gonna get a little bit lower. This first example, I don't see a big difference in terms of sharpness. So even when I zoom in, what I actually see, it's more about the saturation roll off as we move from the darker to lighter side of the face. The larger sensor is just a little smoother at handling this color information. It's a subtle detail, but you can see it even when you're zoomed out. I'd also call this photo low light. It hasn't quite reached night mode yet. If I zoom in, I can see a sharpness difference. Tell me in the comments if you can on YouTube because it's subtle and I, I don't even know if it's gonna translate. Honestly, I expected these photos to, to see more of a difference. This example I think pops out a little bit more. If you don't see it in the detail of the wood up here, you're definitely gonna see it in the texture of the grass. The iPhone 14 is relatively mushy where all the details fully preserved in the 14 Pro. One thing I'm disappointed we still have to deal with is the lens flares in low light. I know this is a huge challenge, but I'm gonna bring it up every time until Apple finds a way to reduce them or maybe eliminate them if we're lucky. This one's even lower light and actually this one I don't really see much of a difference. <laughs> yeah, no, this one is night mode and it's not really more noise or banding in the sky. Um, it's exposed a little bit brighter on the 14 Pro, but not a big difference. These two are portrait night mode, so two modes combined. 
I can see more detail for sure in the uh, undershirt and the blue shirt. Both of them are popping more. Obviously there is more saturation in the pro. And also if I look at the sky, it just has less noise. Um, overall, it is cleaner. I think this one is a pretty clear win for the 14 Pro. Now, if we look at the ultra wide in these lighting conditions, oh, now there is a huge difference. The 14 looks bad. It's, it's too low of light. Uh, it's really just stressing it out. I mean, you couldn't post this anywhere other than Snapchat. And if we just focus on the 14 Pro for a second, I'm pretty happy with this. This is a big improvement over what we saw in the 13 Pro. It's hard to make ultra wide lenses really fast. They're actually rare to come by. And so having it work well in low light like this is impressive and I, I want them to keep pushing it. Here's another ultra wide. There's a little more light in this one. So I think the difference is less exaggerated, but still it's definitely much sharper on the 14 Pro. It's got less aggressive noise removal. You can see on the 14, there is some artifacting around the cables of the bridge. The 14 Pro has also had updates to its True Tone flash. So now it's adaptive, depending on which lens you use, it works differently. Looking at a sample with the main lens, the flash kind of performed similarly. It's a little brighter on the 14 Pro. And if we zoom in, the 14 Pro is just noticeably sharper. That's nice. Looking at all these tests, I see a very modern and mature camera system. And whether you pick up the 14 or the 14 Pro, you're gonna be in a pretty good place. If you don't need some of those Pro features, you could save a few bucks and still get great photos out of your 14. After the keynote, we all kind of felt like the 14 just didn't get updated and that's just not true. It does have a larger sensor and a better lens. So now would be a good time to subscribe so that you remember to see all the tests to the older iPhones. If you're using something like an iPhone 11 or 12, this will help you know if you need to update. But for now, if you want your photos to look better, you can also just edit them to look better. That's what I do to everything that I post. And I did an in-depth video breaking down every single professional or semi-professional editing app on the iPhone. So that's the video you can watch right now to improve your photography. And I'll see you over there, guys.